Yes, we are recording. Hey, it's Madison Chase with Black Hollywood Live, and I'm here with an exclusive interview with the official Rick Gonzalez. You yes. can follow him on Twitter yes. at official Rick G. Rick G. That's yes. him, y'all. And yes. we're on the set of his movie, Deuces, Deuces. with Lorenz Tate. So I want to know, mm-hmm. how did you get to this point, this film, this project? Um, you know, uh, the director, Lorenz Tate, the producers, they all reached out to me and expressed interest in me playing a character by the name of Papers in this film. Papers, y'all. Papers. <laughs> and um, immediately I was interested um, uh, and I read the script. I was in. I was, I was in. I was in. Um, and I knew the type of character that Lorenz was going to embody in this film, and I mm-hmm. felt like it was time. And I didn't, I've never really had the pleasure of like playing with him as an actor in terms of like, you know, really sinking my teeth into some fun dialogue, some fun scenarios, a, a really good character, and to play off him because uh, I've always been a fan of his. So um, I, I felt like, you know, uh, this came at the perfect time. And so uh, I was eager to just jump into it and just devour this character and to just have fun. Mm-hmm. Now take me back to that moment because I could only imagine, like I'm a huge Viola Davis fan and I got a chance to interview her for the help. Yeah. Um, but take me back to that moment when you get a call from Lorenz Tate saying, hey, we want you to, it sounds like they offered you the role, like not yeah. like coming and audition. And Yeah, yeah, well, um, I, I, it was a combination of speaking with Lorenz, uh, speaking with the producers, Yan Lee and, and Ron Robinson, and you know, just having a conversation with them all at different times just expressing interest like you know we think you be right for this character and I I, I was humbled and 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 excited at the same time and um just felt like really grateful that people want to work with me Mm -hmm. you know um especially with the things that I've done in in the past uh I appreciate everything that I get you know and um just always humbled to to continue to work and push forward and that people enjoy the the work that I do. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I was just ecstatic and just like, cool, let's, you know, let's do it, you know? <laughs> okay. Now, in any character, uh, one of my favorite characters is uh, Hancock, Will Smith. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. Like, people don't think, you know, when you're a superhero or any kind of character, if you're a bad person, you always have some redeeming quality. Absolutely. And you always want the audience to walk away with something. So for your character, yeah. Papers, what do you want the audience to walk away with? Well, I think the redeeming quality with Papers is his loyalty mm-hmm. and love that he has for his friends. His, mm-hmm. I think Papers, uh, his relationship with his friends is almost familial. It's, it's, it's more than friendship. It's a family thing. Mm-hmm. You know, he really leans on them. You know, um, he has a lot of love for them. And I think that holds very true to uh, people who live in that world and who um, have to trust their friends to succeed in that world. Mm. You know, it it has to become that um, connected for them in order to feel safe Mm -hmm. because that world is so dangerous and and you never really truly feel safe. Mm -hmm. But when you have that nucleus around you that you trust and I think the connection that we wanted to show with papers and deuces was a connection that they could finish each other's sentences, Mm. that they could enjoy each other's company at any moment, um, that in the worst of times they can laugh about it. You know, they can find humor in those moments. And I think that's something that um, is why I also love the script is it was an opportunity to play you know, a character that um, I would have to find those redeeming qualities to see how an audience would be able to connect with him and 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 want to care for these guys mm-hmm. and how things mm-hmm. uh, ultimately fall apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is so true to life too. You know, when you're talking about finding that loyalty among friends, and you're from New York, and yeah. I'm from Texas, and so moving to LA was kind of like a culture shock to me. Yeah, uh, just because the people are so different, which is interesting because people are like, oh, it's not necessarily people from LA. Right. It's people that move here and they have this idea of what L.A. is. Right. Um, so for you, how does that ring true to, you know, getting on your grind, moving to L.A., yeah. you know, and finding your niche of friends? How true does that ring for you? Uh, it's very true. I think, you know, being a New Yorker, 
um, you know, I've I've grown acc- accustomed to the foods, the energy, mm-hmm. the 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 way I have to transport myself from one place to another. <laughs> subway. You know, so I, I lived I lived on the subway. That was my way, and I'm used to you know sitting next to 300 pound sweaty people that you, you say know 300 in New York. Uh, oh, they'll take up like three seats, and you know what I'm saying have a thigh out, and you're leaning on a thigh. And, <laughs> You trying to listen to your CD Walkman when I, you know, was coming up? Uh, I dated myself. I know it's okay. I it's all right. I got um, At least you didn't say uh, uh, the the little eight track. The, no, I well, oh, <laughs> we're Lord. not we're not that old. Whoa. No, I ain't that old. Um, but yeah, so you know, c- coming to California, obviously, like you know, you have to adjust. Now I have to drive a car. Now mm. I have to like sit in the four or five traffic. Oh. And uh, do that, do that fun stuff. Yeah. But um, California has beautiful things to offer. Just mm-hmm. the weather, just mm-hmm. you know, as humans, you adapt, you acclimate to where yeah. you are, and yeah. you start to find the people that you connect with, and yeah. then you start to call it home. Yeah. And I've been in California like roughly 15 years, and um, you know, I, I love it. I enjoy it now. It, it took quite a while for me to adjust. Me too. Right, but yeah. you know, I I can say I can call it home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still rep New York. Me too. I rep Texas. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Yeah. You know, I, I go back home and get my fix. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think Loren said he still rep Chicago. Got to. Yeah. You got to. You got to. But you, you show love to L.A. L.A. Yeah, shows I love back. I do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now, how is it you've worked with tons of people? I looked at your IMDb. Yeah, thank um, you. <laughs> like, yeah. Thank you for, for checking they that know, out. They know yeah. what I've done. Yeah, we all know. Yeah. <laughs> Now, is there anybody that you haven't worked with that you would love to work with? Mm. I know you said Lorenz is like you've always yeah, looked no, up that, and admired his work. I had to do that. Yeah. I was so glad God put that, made that happen. Mm-hmm. I was, I was excited about that. Oh, it's interesting. Um, you know, I've always wanted to work with John Leguizamo. He's you know, a fantastic. I, I, I love John. Yeah. I, I think John is. He's a New Yorker too, right? He's a fellow New Yorker. Yeah. Um, I, I've always admired his. Um, just the colorfulness that he brings to his characters. Mm-hmm. Um, underrated, underrated actor. You know, his comedy skills we all know about. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely someone I would love to work with. Um, I, I I think, I, I don't know about anybody else in terms of acting, but I know directing wise, I would love to work with like Cameron Crowe. Mm-hmm. I've always been a Cameron Crowe fan. I, I think sixth grade, my teacher played uh, Say Anything to oh, us in wow. the classroom. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I, I just fell in love with that film. And, and from then on, I was like, who in directed this? In the sixth this? grade? In the sixth grade, You yeah. were asking who directed this film? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so you were born to do this? I, I, I literally was, yeah. yes, literally. I, I you told, were like 11, 12. Yeah, no, but I, yeah, 100%. I mean, <laughs> that's, it was all I thought about, acting. So, um, yeah, so they, I just always was a fan of what he was been doing and stuff, so... I would love to do a Cameron Crow film, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's the evolution of Rick Gonzalez? Like you have, you started when you were in the sixth grade knowing that you wanted to be an actor. So now you're here mm-hmm. and there's still, I'm sure you, there's tons more for you to do and tons of things that you would like to do. Mm-hmm. Can you see yourself doing uh, writing, directing on the other side? Yeah, I think um, I think that's a, a natural evolution in terms of um, wanting to tell stories, mm-hmm. especially wanting to include yourself in the stories that you want to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I've always put on pause the idea of seeing myself in in a different hat mm-hmm. creatively, mm-hmm. just because acting is such a daunting task in terms of wanting to uh, successfully. Uh, garner the attention you need mm-hmm. to continue the craft and at the same time like master it in a way where you can move on to the next project mm-hmm. um, but I, I think it's inevitable I mean I've def- I'm definitely um, eyeing certain things that I want to develop on my own um, in order to uh, create stuff for myself mm-hmm. so um, I wouldn't say directing right away okay. um, maybe writing and producing mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so one of my favorites, she's, um, she started on YouTube, is Saray, the awkward black girl. Okay. Um, so she kind of filled a void that, like, people didn't really identify with because we know the, you know, the, the flashy, mm. loud, we yeah. know that girl, we know that black girl, but uh-huh. we didn't know this awkward black girl who gets in kind of awkward situ- situations. Right. So she kind of filled that void. Mm. So 
what void would you be feeling? Like, who? what do you feel like is missing in the industry that you could bring to the table that's completely different? That's a good question. I, I, I appreciate that question. I mm-hmm. think um, I represent the Latino that's born in America that mm-hmm. consumes pop culture, mm-hmm. that um, is in the hip, is in the know, mm-hmm. that is also very connected to who they are culturally. Mm-hmm. So... Um, the type of Latino that I represent can can cross those different cultures mm. of pop culture and their own heritage mm-hmm. and at the same time still be themselves. Mm-hmm. So it's not a, a, a stereotype or, mm. you know, or um, a characteristic that, that, you know, might be familiar to like other stereotypes. I think I just want to infuse that idea into cinema. Mm. You know, I think there are a lot of people who... Uh, grew up with parents who were born in America that are Latino um, and who, you know, have gone on to do different things in their lives. I have mm-hmm. different um, scenarios that have happened in their lives. You know, it's not just the um, the drug experience. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of other stories that, are, that can be told. Um, so I represent that person. You know, mm-hmm. I think I identify with that. And so... Um, that's something that I'm looking forward to, like uh, being able to kind of create that mm-hmm. um, because we do see how the Mexican-American story is being told and how mm-hmm. the uh, European Latino story mm-hmm. is being told. Right. Um, but the American Latino story and how they um, are very prevalent in this country mm-hmm. is um, something that's not really looked at. And, um, you know, obviously Mexicans are a very large population of Latinos in America. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, and, um, you know, I, I relate to the Caribbean idea. Okay. And so, you know, that's something that's very close to the African-American community. It is, yeah. You know, it's absolutely. like almost very, like, mm-hmm. synchronous. Yeah. So um, that's something that I want to explore and bring mm-hmm. to the table. Mm-hmm. I, I I would love to see because there's shows I, I do an after show um, for Jane the Virgin and so yeah. it's always very interesting to hear about that culture yeah. and it's so incredible and inspiring to me because that's one thing that I like about the Latino culture is that you know it's a family yeah you guys stick together and yeah. it's a beautiful experience so that's I can't wait to see it yeah, yeah. no I mean I, you know I think um, you know I think sky's the limit in terms of like you know. And I want to see, like, and that's why I'm so happy you brought up Jane the Virgin. Like, I'm proud to see someone like Gina Rodriguez Rodriguez, doing great. And and I think she speaks to that ideal, you know. Um, So I think that's what it's about. It's like um, finally seeing actors of that caliber Mm -hmm. who can um, bring that idealism to the forefront. um, Because it's more than just a Mexican-American experience, Mm -hmm. you know, even though they are the majority. Mm Um, there are other stories that can be told that are super interesting and rich yeah. and um, you know and it could be interesting to see so mm-hmm. I think that um, it's awesome to see her succeed and to be able to take a show like that and and, and, and um, do such a great job and mm-hmm. um, you know there's so many wonderful actors on that show and so um, it's really great mm-hmm. and speaking of that show because one of the things after talking to a lot of the the cast on the on the show one of the things that they talk about is how embracing the the whole set is and everybody mm. on set is right. and so I get that feeling about yeah. the deuces set yeah and just hearing the Rens talk and then hearing you talk and then watching you guys in the hallway I'm like this feels like a family so yeah. how important is that you know on set and then what you see on the screen yeah. eventually how important is that for you Oh, it has, to, it has to be there. Um, you know, I think that, you know, if we're going to convey a very close, tight-knit group, mm-hmm. <laughs> we have to somehow try to get along. And sh- I think ultimately we have a lot of respect for each other mm-hmm. as individuals and what we've done. And I think first and foremost, I have a lot of respect for what Lorenz Tate has done as an actor. Uh, so it makes it very easy for me to trust his decisions as an mm-hmm. actor and to convey that on screen and, you um, that's what we want to bring to the characters so that way you can believe our circumstance and enjoy the film. So it's very vital. You need that. Yeah. And speaking of being vital, social media is such a huge part of entertainment when it came to like scandals that you know that it was about to be off the air. 
they were about to cancel it, but because of the social media yes, and people yes, on Twitter. I about, yes, yeah. I did hear about that. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. so it's really vital to, you know, giving um, the actors their, their dues when it comes to, right. you know, keeping something on the air. Mm-hmm. So as far as selling tickets and selling tickets to this film, mm-hmm. How important is it for social media and for us to get involved in your social media and follow you and follow Deuce as a follow film me. and so that we can make sure that it's a it's a great, successful opening? Yeah, no, um, you know, I think that um, it's super important now in the age of, you know, blogs and mm-hmm. Twitter and just all these feeds that <laughs> we have to, like, you know, constantly... I think it's a fine line. Like it's like yes, it, it's a little a, invasive. Yeah, sometimes. it's a it's it's. I mean, I try not to Instagram my my breakfast. And <laughs> you don't do that. Me on the potty. <laughs> not on the potty. Yeah, many patties. No, 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 no. Um, no I, even though I need one. I think I'm, I'm, no, I, your I hands look good. They're yeah, good. Yeah, they're good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, we, we want the awareness out there. We yeah. want people to come see this film. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I just look at it like, yeah, you know, you want people to get excited and you want people mm-hmm. to know about what's going on. And I think it's a good idea for people to want to engage yeah. us and yeah. and the show. I think it's just another tool to connect with the audience and the people that uh, are potential fans. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so I think, you know, Lorenz taking his shirt off and Rotimi and Lance, those guys, I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm just going to play the back. And, well, you know what you could do? You could just, yeah. like, rub your hands through your hair because ladies right. like that. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just I, mean, that. I just need yeah. to practice that move. I, it don't really come natural. Okay, you know? okay. The, 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 the well, swag see, that's No, the swag fineness, you got it. Like, if you don't have to Papers practice. has that. Yeah. Papers has okay. that. Me, I, you know, on the other hand, I have to work at it. You no, know, you don't. Papers does it. He doesn't have to. No, I, I, do. I, do, I do. But um, yeah, no, I, th- I think I think we're doing a good job of it, and you're gonna see a lot more of mm-hmm. deuces and and a lot mm-hmm. more of cool tidbits that we can throw out there. Um, so hopefully, people will come see it. You know. Okay, so this is what I'm proposing because I have a degree in marketing. Oh. Um, so. <laughs> So what I think we should do, we should have like, you know, because we I've seen him at the gym. I'm not going to tell you what gym, Uh, but I think we should do like a movie, you know, like the weekend that it opens. uh Like you should be there and like we should like do a Twitter like. That'll be hot. Yeah, we yeah we should do that. We yeah. should get the whole cast. Get the well, even, even if like everybody's like in different places. Right. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Like go see the movie with Ricky Gonzalez that plays Papers. That works. Isn't that dope? Yeah. I think that'd be hot. I think that'd be dope. Maybe yeah. do like a lucky winner to like roll to the premiere with me in in, in Papers' car. Yes. Ah, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Y'all heard it yeah, here first. Cool. Come yeah. hang out with Papers. Come hang out with Papers. And go see the movie. And Madison, because I should yeah, be there and, too. And <laughs> Madison, because she has a degree in marketing. She <laughs> us up. That was my idea. Her idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we know what's next for you. Incredible things. Hope so. Yeah. Hope so. And we, you told us who you want to work with. Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, um, the only thing we need is your social media following so we could follow yes. you on Twitter, yes. Instagram. On Twitter, mm-hmm. official Rick G. Mm-hmm. And Instagram, official Rick underscore G. You got it. This is him, Rick Gonzalez. I'm Madison Chase. This is Black Hollywood Live. And we are on the set of Deuces. 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 <laughs>